Pauline M. Hardington was a pioneering leader and rear admiral in the United States Navy. Pauline was the first woman to attend the National War College in D.C., the first woman to work as secretary to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and was commissioned as Rear Admiral in 1981, the second woman in the history of the Navy to rise to that rank. Her last command was leading the Naval Training Center in Orlando, Florida. Today we honor and remember Pauline Hardington. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for life and for the ability to share that life with one another. We pause here today with thankful hearts for our remembrances of Pauline, for her service to her country and for her love of her family. Strengthen us as we continue to mourn her loss Strengthen us as we honor her memory and use us for your glory in all things. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament scripture reading this morning comes to us from the 23rd Psalm, where we hear these words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and afterwards I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In this reading, we are reminded of God's constant love for us. Often we take for granted the simpler things of life, like a beautiful sunset, a quiet afternoon spent by a cool stream, but these things should remind us of our God, a God who provides for us times of quiet rest. In these times of peaceful reflection, God often helps to restore our souls. Even in the middle of loss that comes our way, when it feels that we are all by ourselves, we have the assurance that God is there to comfort us through life's journey. He guards and guides us along the way, even when we face our enemies. When others may turn on us, our loving God will welcome us as his special guest. The blessings of our God are indeed overflowing and will be with us not only in this lifetime but throughout eternity. May these words of hope 
and assurance continue to uphold each of us in the days and weeks that lie ahead. Our New Testament reading comes to us from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, where in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 we read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our distress so that we too may comfort one another. For we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings so that we too may also share in his comfort. Our hope is to remain unshaken as we endure whatever hardships are to come our way. God has in the past delivered us and will continue to do so into the future. So let us not rely on ourselves, but on our God, who will deliver us from all harm. Pray and give thanks for the blessings granted to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, we gather here in the old post chapel on Fort Myer to celebrate and to remember the life of Pauline Martha Hardington. Born in 1931 in Providence, Rhode Island, our country was recovering from the Great Depression and was about to enter a period of renewed prosperity. All the while, ominous clouds of conflict were gathering on foreign shores, and eventually our country would enter World War II, fighting a war on two fronts, both in Europe and in the Pacific. This was the reality that Pauline faced as a teenager. I cannot help but feel that this helped to shape her mindset as she looked towards her future. And we were talking just a few moments ago, it seems appropriate that we have fog today because that's something that you see a lot in Rhode Island. She would attend the Rhode Island College of Education and graduate in 1953 and would then receive her commission as an ensign and in the United States Navy and embark on a career that would be best described as extraordinary. The Navy that she joined was a far cry different from the Navy of today. In many respects, you could make the case that Pauline helped our Navy to take positive strides that are still being felt and implemented to this day. As a young officer, her extraordinary talent and ability to rise to any challenge made her a standout among her peers. She was chosen as an admiral's aide as a young lieutenant, was the first female naval officer to attend the Naval War College. She was chosen to work on a project initiative from the Lyndon Baines Johnson administration aimed at providing equal opportunities to all, which was pioneering work at that time. And while I'm sure that she faced her share of challenges, and there were those who probably did not value her outstanding contributions. She rose above all of that. She would even make the front cover, I believe, of a major, major news magazine alongside of other trendsetters, including NASA astronaut Sally Ride. But these types of accolades didn't go to her head. Instead, it inspired her to work even harder not content to rest solely on her own talent, but bettering herself at every opportunity, and in turn, bettering those around her as well. She was a natural-born leader and was an inspiration to those who were privileged to work alongside her. She would become the first woman to work as an administrative assistant to the Joint Chiefs of Staff and was known for her ability to stay calm in the most stressful situations. She was often called upon as a speaker and regularly highlighted the importance of hard work, high character, and giving one's best effort to any task. She would climb the ranks of our Navy and would be only the second female to be selected to the rank of Rear Admiral. Her last command would be the Naval Training Center in Orlando, Florida. This site 
became the sole area of recruit training for enlisted women. Prior to this, women had been trained in Bainbridge, Maryland. The move to Orlando created the first co-located training site for enlisted men and women to train together. So even in her last assignment, she continued to be a part of writing the history of our Navy. And while this base would eventually be closed as part of the base realignment and closure plan and would graduate its last class in 1995, the history that was made there is still remembered to this day. And Pauline would officially retire in 1984, capping off a successful 31-year career. But she would continue to make a difference in the lives of others for years to come. During her career, she would have several individuals who would come to mean a great deal to her. I know that she and Donna would share many years together and enjoyed many outstanding adventures. I believe one of those adventures were the times that they would be in their local golfing community where Pauline had earned the title of the Sheriff of Orange Tree. She enjoyed being outside and caring for her garden. She would also use her leadership skills through her involvement with her local community. She would organize and participate several golf tournaments to benefit those who were struggling with breast cancer. Her family, and especially her sisters, were very important to her. And I must send my regrets to Rita, who is not able to be here with us today, but I know is probably in spirit. Pauline was very proud of her 12 nieces and nephews, as well as her 16 great nieces and nephews, and left you all a wonderful example of what can be accomplished through hard work and perseverance. She enjoyed some of the simpler things in life, especially her dogs, be it Schnauzers or Dotsons. They were all special to her. Her strong spirit continued well into her elder years as she would continue to do her own yard work well into her 80s. And I feel sorry for the one individual who one day stopped her and asked her, oh, was seeing a flag in uh, a flag that had the one star on there and asked, oh, was your husband in the military? To which she said, no, I was an admiral. She was proud, but not arrogant and truly lived the core values of our Navy, honor, courage, commitment. She was indeed a true patriot, and I think that kind of explains why she passed on July 4th. Each one of you here today knew her in different ways, but all of you recognize the extraordinary person that she was. So as we draw a close to our time here today, I want us to take a few moments to reflect on the special times that each one of you shared with Pauline. If time permitted, I would open up the pulpit and allow you to share, and I'm quite sure that we could go on for hours. We would laugh, cry, laugh a little more. Time does not permit that today. But with all this being said, over the next few moments, I want to challenge you to remember these special times and, more importantly, the way that your lives had been enriched through hers. So with these thoughts in mind, let's enter a time of meditation as we hear the great hymn of our faith, Amazing Grace, played by our organist.
Gracious God, you bless us with skills and abilities, but you expect us to better ourselves. And today we thank you for Pauline who did just that, who took those basic skills and gifts that you gave to her and served her country and in turn her fellow man. Thank you for her memory. Thank you for her example. Bless us, guide us, and help us to honor you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please rise with me for the playing and the singing of our Navy hymn, Eternal Father.
Ready? 